Hi, hello everyone. My name is Sarah Martone. I am a three-time graduate from the University of Guelph and I've recently just completed some work being a data policy analyst for Environment and Climate Change Canada and I'm currently the instructor for One Health 1000 Introduction to One Health here at the University of Guelph. Could you tell us a little bit more about your academic background or what you studied? Uh, so yeah, so I completed my Bachelor's of Science degree in Zoology here at the University of Guelph in 2017. Then I took a year off to figure out what I wanted to do in my next steps and came back to the University of Guelph to complete a bachelor, or sorry, a Master's in Biomedical Science and Applied Reproductive Biotechnology. Um, and then after completing that, I decided to pursue a master's in public health as well here at the University of Guelph. And throughout that time, I was able to work and complete research in a variety of different areas. So during my master's in biomed, I did a research project at the Toronto Zoo. And then while, work, or while completing my master's in public health, I was able to work with Dr. Claire Jardine at the Canadian Wildlife Health Cooperative, as well as Dr. Jennifer Provencher at Environment and Climate Change Canada. What does One Health mean to you? So One Health to me means opportunity. Um, I love that it's an opportunity for students to be able to pivot their skills across multiple disciplines and really be able to push themselves to pursue the interests that they might want to explore both in uh, professional capacity or maybe further research along in their schooling. Um, for me, it's the ability or it's an opportunity again to just network and collaborate with different researchers in many different fields and to be able to create a more comprehensive perspective to a certain uh, problem that you might be trying to solve. So to me, it's really just about that opportunity for uh, students to be able to both expand their skills and to also be able to apply them in a variety of different disciplines. Can I ask you why One Health? Sure. So I did not know anything about One Health until I came uh, to grad, until I was in my graduate studies. I am very envious of all of you undergrads who get to learn this right from the get-go. Um, I became really involved in the One Health initiatives on campus, including the One Health Student Committee, because, as I mentioned, I have a lot of interests and a lot of passions, and I felt a lot of pressure, especially in my undergrad, to kind of pick one area to focus in. And so when I heard about One Health and we talked about it in lecture, I got so excited that there was a field out there that basically rewarded you for being an interdisciplinary thinker and being able to pivot yourself into different fields and allowed you to explore those multiple curiosities. And so that's why One Health to me was so important is because it was for a lot of students who maybe didn't fit into one specific discipline and wanted to explore and draw on the different fields that they were interested in because I felt like I didn't really get to do that until grad school. So I just really wanted to be involved as much as possible from the ground floor and that's why I love teaching this course because it's really exciting to see how students realize that they don't have to fit into a very specific mold to be successful and they're getting to see all these different researchers and they get to really see where they will be when they're finished their undergraduate studies and that they don't have to pick just one area that they can be selfish and look at all these different areas, <laughs> I guess. Um, is there a uh... Is there an assignment that sticks out to you that you like giving your students? Yeah, so it's definitely maybe something that might seem really daunting as a first year because I know I didn't give any oral presentations until my upper years, but in One Health 1000 there is an oral presentation. It isn't a group, but it's still an oral presentation that they have to give for the class. And I tried to be flexible in that I let students choose, well their groups at least, choose what topic they would like so they're not forced to a standardized topic and I, I don't choose it as long as it fits in a One Health capacity. So I think that that really gives them the opportunity to be able to pursue what they really are interested in or something that stuck out to them in the semester. So they do have to give an oral presentation and it has to incorporate uh, different components of health communication but also the cutting edge One Health research in that area. And it's a really good opportunity for students to both explore what they are interested in in an academic or professional capacity, but also to be able to practice those skills of presenting in front of a large audience, which always seems daunting until you get it out of the way. And then after that, every presentation is smooth sailing after that. <laughs> what has been the most rewarding piece about teaching One Health 1000 so far? So the most rewarding thing for teaching One Health 1000 for me is being able to see how energized my students are when they're learning different areas of research or maybe learning more about what, the, what they see in themselves and where they wanna go. It's really, really exciting and invigorating to be able to see just how excited they are about the opportunities that will be waiting for them when they were finished their undergraduate degrees, whether that be continuing to pursue more academia or to just enter the workforce. So for me, that's been the most rewarding and something that I've tried to 
and still is learning some of the soft skills. So in One Health 1000, we learn a lot about different ways of health communication and how to give effective oral presentations because these are the skills that you're going to need both in academia, but also in the workforce and being able to appropriately communicate your ideas and perspectives is one of the most important components to also a One Health perspective is being able to actually communicate that effectively with a variety of different audiences and from a variety of different disciplines. Is there something in your experience from teaching One Health 1000 that's really stuck with you, whether it be a story or a student or anything? Yeah, um, there's a, a few things. One, I really find um, quite, I find that students are really engaging with me as well because I did my uh, two master's degrees here at the University of Guelph. I always uh, offer to talk to students if they're interested in pursuing either of those programs. I can talk about my experience and what it was like. And I've had a lot of students reach out uh, to me to talk about uh, my experience in the programs, what I liked, and kind of what set it apart from other schools. And so I've really enjoyed being able to talk to students and see where they see themselves and to be able to help them unfold that has been really, really rewarding to be able to see where their interests lie and how it aligns with different programs or professions. And so that's been really uh, rewarding and really engaging. Um, something else that's been really um, invigorating and exciting is seeing students' responses, as most of the students um, in the previous couple semesters before the Bachelor of One Health program, um, was opened, we had a lot of students primarily from science backgrounds. And even with our lectures, we had, for example, Dr. John Walsh come and talk from a classics perspective on One Health and seeing how students really responded to that lecture and were just like, wow, that's so cool. It's so interesting to learn about how classical antiquity and pandemics go together, um, which might not be an area that they would have ever explored without this course. And so that to me has been just really fun and really, really rewarding and engaging to see that the dynamics of this course are really conducive to student learning. And that has been that has been amazing. <laughs> um, so what are your future plans? So I took a long, hard look at what I wanted to do next and where I saw myself and being involved in a lot of the One Health initiatives on campus has really opened my mind to looking at more interdisciplinary areas. So I am actually hoping to pursue a PhD in the history of medicine. Um, I don't know where yet. Uh, I'm still in the initial uh, planning stages of my project proposal, but it really opened my eyes that I've always enjoyed um, some arts courses, my history courses, classics courses at the University of Guelph, which is also something that we talk about in our class a bit. We do have a classics professor come and give a guest lecture in One Health 1000. And so that really pushed me to realize that I didn't have to choose between history or science. And even though my background is primarily in uh, public health and biomed, I'm actually still able to pivot those skills <laughs> and to apply to a PhD in the history of medicine, which will allow me to bring together both of the things that I love the most and to be able to enter that field, even though I don't necessarily have a full background in arts or in the history of medicine, I'm still going to be able to be successful in that field. So why the history of medicine? Um, so I am looking at pursuing a PhD in the history of medicine, as I said, to combine both my interests in history and classical studies, along with my scientific background and kind of pairing those together. Um, I've really become interested in how both social and political influences or have influenced medicine and then also vice versa. And just seeing how those two interact on just so many different levels and how throughout history, they have both shaped each other for the better and for the worse. So I'm really interested in just exploring the dynamics between science and society, I guess, but mainly through um, a medical perspective compared to just an overall science perspective. And that's why I'm kind of looking at the history of medicine. <laughs> could I ask you, like, if you could give one piece of advice to either a BUH student or one someone taking it in the fall? Yeah. What would it be? Um, I would say my biggest piece of advice would be to network with any researchers that you find either really engaging or their work is really interesting and to just not be shy to reach out to them and ask them more about their work especially the guest lecturers that come to class like they are taking the time out of their day to come and share their passion with you and if you are genuinely interested they will give you that energy back tenfold and so you should absolutely take every opportunity to network with the faculty at the University of Guelph or outside of the university um, because people are really interested in sharing their passion with you and you might be able to find maybe a, a volunteer opportunity or a job opportunity or a grad school opportunity 
and you should just be able to use the time that you have in your undergrad or grad studies um, to be able to figure out where you see yourself and being able to learn from other people and other researchers that have come before you is a really great way of making that happen. Perfect.